welcome back to the fourth and final episode of From Me to You. In this episode, we hear from Dr. Guman and Ashumi about why mental health is important to them, how they maintain their self-care and mental health during the pandemic, and some tips and advice for self-care practices during finals week. Thank you um, both for being here for the uh, fourth and final episode of the semester of From Me To You. I'm super excited um, to talk to you all today about uh, mental health and wellness and thinking about preparing for finals. Um, so we are going to just kind of jump right into introductions. So we'll start with Ashumi and then we will go right into Ahmed. So just um, introduce yourself, your name, your pronouns, positions um, that you have hold at the university. And then if you're in school, you're, you're in school. Hey. Um, well, hi, everybody. My name is Ashumir Okadia. I am a senior information science major. Um, at Pitt, I serve as the student director of the Pitt Alumni Student Network. I'm also one of the vice presidents of the Blue and Gold Society, and I um, am also in one of the first year mentors on the team this year. And yeah, and that's me. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Ahmed Guman. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm a licensed psychologist and the Associate Director for Strategic Programs and Services in the University Counseling Center. Amazing. So I just wanted to jump right in and ask right away, why is mental health important to you? Um, and you can share a little bit about that from your perspective and maybe from like why you got involved in some like mental health work or uh, organization. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Dr. Guman and then we'll uh, end with Ashumi. Yeah, so I think growing up, um, I was always good at, I was always good with people giving advice, motivating, inspiring, and I just enjoyed it. It brought me a lot of meaning, passion, and made me feel good. So I was, and I knew like for my life, I wanted to like do some work that was like in service. Um, so as I was going through college, I did the pre-med thing and, you know, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I think there was a moment I remember sitting in class one night and like, it was like a social psychology class um, at night and I was just sitting there and I had this like epiphany that like, I just want to be a psychologist because then I can make a career out of just, you know, helping, supporting people, supporting their well being and mental health. Um, and also like from a strengths-based perspective. So I, um, you know, I'm a big advocate of positive psychology and strengths-based work. So that's really important as well. So not just helping people improve their mental health, um, but also like helping them flourish. So oftentimes, like when we think of mental health, it's usually we think of people that might have like a mental illness or really struggling and there's that stigma around it, right? But really like we can all be working on our mental health and just like working toward flourishing and improving our well-being. And, you know, so that's really important to me, um, something I'm very passionate about. So a lot of the work I do is through that lens as well. And also like I have the opportunity to do, to support like our BIPOC students and community and do a lot of like, you know, multicultural counseling work and just culturally responsive like programs for our students here on campus, which is, you know, I'm very passionate about and, you know, it makes my work here very meaningful and I appreciate it also. And then I guess for me, I was really interested in mental health just because it's something that I think everyone is able to kind of unify behind. And just like that idea of everybody does go through it, kind of like what you were saying earlier um, about, you know, everyone kind of has something that we always think that people, if they are dealing with like mental health, I'm going to start that takeover. I'm sorry. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> I, th I think like a lot of times whenever people are thinking about like mental health, they think that you have to have like a problem or something going on, but just like that general well-being and everybody just kind of needing some sort of support has always been something that I've personally always been a big advocate for because I think that it doesn't matter like what you're going through you could have the quote-unquote happiest life or you could be dealing with the law and it doesn't matter like at the end of the day you still have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself and doing the things that make you happy and can help you keep like a solid keep your mental health solid and so to me, that's something that's always been very interesting. And also just being a college student, I feel like we, every college student goes through something, whether it's you fail a test and you feel that, or you go through something emotional with family or friends or whatever it may be, being away from home. And so I think just all the different aspects that, you know, unfortunately does unify a lot of people, but so it's so awesome that everyone is able to kind of get behind that mental health and just kind of be like, hey, I am doing this to get to provide a better um, like outlook on life. So that's kind of where I, why I'm really interested in that. 
And I think that you both raise interesting points um, when you discuss the stigma and you're also talking about um, wh who it's for. It's not necessarily about for everybody else, it's for yourself. And I think that that kind of really leads into a question of what do you do for your own self-care um, in terms of like wellness and what kind of practices do you do? Um, I know that for me, particularly given that I was in the house most of the year, I didn't have access to a gym. I wasn't able to do some of the things that I like to do. Um, so I've finally gotten back to being in the gym and doing reading. So I wanted to ask both of you, um, we can start with the Shumi, what do you do to kind of um, practice self-care? One of my favorite things to do would be actually to cook or bake and then also um, journal. Those are like the two things I love to do just because whenever I'm cooking, even if it might not turn out the best sometimes, I still feel like I'm going into the kitchen and just kind of creating something and then can enjoy it with my friends, my family, or just for myself. And then I like I really enjoy journaling for self-care because at that point, it's just me, my pen and my paper, and I can just write down whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm feeling, good and the bad, and kind of just acknowledge like, hey, I didn't realize that this you know, bad grade that I got was actually bothering me as much as it was until I wrote it all out. So that's kind of the two big things I like to do when it comes to self-care. Yeah, and Jordan, similar to what you shared, I think I would say my two, <clears throat> my two big self-care activities are working out and reading. I love to read. Um, and I also, for me, like self-care is also like constantly working on myself, bettering myself, right, through whatever it means that is. So, um, you know, I, I love learning. So whether that's listening to podcasts or watching documentaries, like, I really enjoy that because I feel like, you know, I'm continuing to like learn, grow, and it is relaxing and stuff like that too. So I would say for my self-care, definitely uh, reading. Um, but I don't read fiction. So that's something I'm trying to get into. Everything I read is nonfiction. <laughs> so we started a book club at the counseling center, which has, you know, allowed me to read some fiction books, but for the most part, I'm always reading nonfiction stuff to continue to just like learn and grow and, and working out, being outside and, and just being in nature, especially during this time. Um, I've always like loved nature and being outdoors. And I think like during this time, like it's really made me gain an appreciation for it um, to do that because we're, you know, working from home behind it, sitting down and just in front of a screen all day long. So. And I think I also have not read fiction for a while, but I just started picking back it back up because a lot of the things that are going on right now are so heavy and a lot of the topics that I like to read in nonfiction are also heavy so I needed to find a break so I can definitely agree that I am a big nonfiction person but I've definitely found some solace um, in fiction works. Um, I think that really um, you bring up a good point that they've started a uh, book club at the counseling center so I just wanted to ask you specifically um, Dr. Guman about the services that the counseling center may be offer offering now um, that may have been different in the past that you hope that they will continue to implement and continue to do in the future? Yeah, for sure. I think I've shared this with a lot of people that I think like the, the pandemic has like forced us to like think innovatively. And like, I think like we're doing a lot of things that we could have done previously, right? And not just in the counseling center, but, you know, other departments and student affairs as well. So I think I mean, one of the things we had to transition to was to provide telemental health services to our students or so working, you know, 100% from home. That's how we connect and support our students. And we found it um, a lot of success in it and effectiveness in it. And, and it, it helps eliminate certain barriers as well for students, right, around like transportation and just like their busy schedules and getting to the counseling center. So now you can, you know, in, in the privacy and comfort of your own space, like you can engage in therapy services. So I think as we go back and things hopefully transition back to, to normal or the new normal, as I, as I call it, I think one of the things that we hope to continue to do is to provide telehealth services to students. Um, and it also allows us to support our students even when they go home um, over, over the summer and stuff like that. Because as long as they're in the state of Pennsylvania, we can continue to provide services for them. So that's one of the things that I think is gonna, is here to stay. Um, that's really helped us innovate our services and to, to reach our students and support them, so. Telemental health has been very vital in the pandemic. Um, and I think that, I mean, I finally went to the doctor for the first time in a while and I was able to do an intake appointment over the um, computer and that was very helpful. And I think that's allowing us to reach more and more populations that aren't necessarily mobile. And I think that that is a very important point. Um, I want to kind of pivot to kind of talk about, there has been a lot of conversation about like after the pandemic and when we go back outside, that's everybody's favorite thing, um, that mental health is going to be a big concern. So I want to kind of look to the future to think about, you know, ways that 
as assuming you as a student leader and then Dr. Gilman as somebody who works in the counseling center, how we can think about and reinvent how we cater to students' mental health. So maybe just thinking about from you, Ashumi, like maybe some type of like programming that, um, you know, the alumni network does and first year mentors do that might be helpful to share for students um, that may need mental health resources. Yeah, definitely. And I think personally, I've loved being a part of both the Pit Alumni Student Network and the first year mentor team because I've worked with students coming into college and also getting ready to leave college. And I feel like the mental health um, like impacts that both of those um, different stages of college can have on a student is so unique because when you come into, as a first year student, you're like, oh my God, I'm in a new place, maybe with family, friends, like your environment. And then when you're leaving, you're like, oh my God, I'm leaving now, <laughs> I finally got acclimated. And so I think it would be very beneficial for both um, sets like both organizations to really kind of first start off by talking to the students and saying hey what exactly are you kind of like dealing with I know that for the first year mentors we have a trans we have transfer students we have commuter students and then just like traditional first year students and just kind of dealing with all three of them and kind of realizing okay what does a commuter student need versus a transfer student versus just a first year student what is someone who's in state versus out of state versus international need and so I think that really just kind of pivoting your programming to make sure that you are hitting those needs um, and kind of just like providing that support and kind of kind of forcing people to get together. And I'm not saying like drag them and get them together. Because obviously that's not going to work because pe different people react to things differently. But of course, just like having those abilities to do things in person and virtually. And then in terms of like the alumni network, I would say like when you, whenever students are getting ready to kind of leave, or even when they're still at school, just kind of recognizing, hey, yeah, whenever you graduate, whenever you walk across that stage, things are going to be stressful, but let's kind of just have a moment, like having like an open space to talk about it. Because I know that mm -hmm. I personally talk to a lot of my friends who are graduating about it, but I think a program that would be very beneficial would be kind of just like people hanging out in Shenley, talking, and like maybe friends that you make through both organizations, both like events, both um, events of the groups, put on and just be like hey let, why don't we go and get coffee and talk about like where we're at right now with our mental health when it comes to graduating or with what not so I think kind of like tailoring the programs to kind of really see what each student is probably feeling and kind of like getting a story for that. Yeah I think similar to how we've been able to like approach uh, you know mental health and wellness with our student population just kind of meeting the emerging and unique needs that come up so I think after the pandemic there is going to be you know, anxiety for students going back into the classroom, having more exposure, right? There's going to be those problems that come up. So how can we be supportive and, and do that? And then there's that need for, you know, in-person um, engagement as well, right? So how can we do that and balance that with, you know, maintaining safety and guidelines and precautions and all those things. So I think there's going to be, again, like continuing to think innovatively right now, we're like completely working from home and virtual, but then we're going to go back hopefully into this like hybrid format where it's going to be a little bit of both, which is going to allow us to then like create more unique programming for students. Um, but really, I just think meeting the students where they are, meeting their needs, um, you know, as they come back, as they, I mean, students are on campus, right? But as we like fully return mm -hmm. to campus and go back into the classroom, and those kinds of things, I think unique challenges are going to arise. And also just the impact of the pandemic on students, like so far, um, you know, what like the data in college mental health has been showing is like, um, as like students are being impacted by the pandemic. I think we all are in different ways, but we're not seeing that many students that are coming in because of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, they're, they're, and this is across the country, um, like they're not showing that as like the primary concern for them seeking mental health. It's a very small portion, which was surprising, right? And so I think like after the pandemic, there's gonna be unique mental health concerns that arise. And I think like being able to support our students with that. I mean, I think we'll see it as well, like being over a year into this and a year and a half into this, like how is that impacting us? Um, so that should be interesting as well. Yeah, I definitely think about that. And I think about um, the environment that we're currently in. And I remember just being on campus and um, seeing those green shirts like Let's Talk or being able to go to the stress-free zone or just kind of having the physical presence of the counseling center there. If you were going to student health, you knew it was attached. Um, so I kind of want to just ask, like, what do you miss about one being on campus, but also like when you're having a stressful day, like what, what, do you do when you're on campus um, to help you kind of relieve those mental stress 
stresses. Uh, I know particularly for me, I've had the opportunity to just kind of be in the presence of, you know, those RAs that have had those Lux Talk shirts on and just walk up to them and to kind of be brief about my day. So that was also helpful. I think some of the resources that we have on campus aren't necessarily available. Um, so if you just want to share something that you kind of find solace in while you're on campus, as opposed to being home, um, I think that would be helpful for other students um, that are actually on campus. Yeah, so I think I think for for me, um, just not having, you know, just like those informal interactions that you have, you know, at the coffee station in passing, um, you know, just like those have been missing, just like learning about people's day to day, how people are doing, um, you know, those things have been missing, just like that in person, just like kind of like going out to lunch with a colleague, um, you know, that's been missing. And for me, like I'm a foodie, so I love eating out. So I usually eat out for lunch, right? So I miss that a lot. And and also like for me, like um, I have a very good like work-life balance in the sense that I can like leave work at work, but now like work mm-hmm. is home and it's been a little bit more challenging. So I think I'm looking forward to separating that. And I actually like, like my commute because like going back to like part of my self-care and my commute, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So I find a lot of like, you know, like I enjoy that a lot. So I actually miss the commute and it really helps separate like, you know, my, my home life and my work life. And that's been a little bit more blended. So I'm looking forward to that balance as well. I mean, just being on campus, like just, you know, um, just like finding, and also like, um, I'm, I'm a jokester. Like I joke around, I like to make people laugh. And I've noticed that like Zoom has like hindered my ability to do that because everyone's muted. So I can like make you laugh, but I don't get to hear your laughter. So it's like, I'm looking forward to that too, just like making a room full of people laugh again. And um, <clears throat> I've missed that a lot. And um, everyone that knows me, they'll probably laugh when they watch this, but it's a part of me that I feel like I've lost in the pandemic, so. I definitely agree with everything you said about the work-life balance. Um, for me, it's like school versus life because everything that I do is at this desk or it's at my desk in my bedroom. And I think it's very difficult. Um, kind of just like missing all those like personal interactions, like walking into some, like running into a friend whenever you're just walking down the street. I miss that just kind of feeling like, oh my God, hi, how are you? Cause everyone, you don't really have to leave. You can just get food delivered. You could just, you don't really have to do all of that. Um, I also really miss walking into the counseling center or, um, you know, whenever I had meeting with anybody about like my mental health, I would always love whenever I would just walk in and talk to the person like their office and just kind of know that, within those four corners is where everything that I'm talking about is staying. Um, But now kind of like knowing I'm in my apartment and even though like obviously I am, everything's private in my apartment as well, just kind of knowing that I'm still kind of like in the same place doing the same thing, um, being on a computer, just talking to someone. So I definitely miss kind of like the personal aspects of going somewhere. And then the physical activity, I miss doing yoga on like the peat lawn. I miss doing all of that. Um, It's not, I feel like it's personally not the same doing it in my living room. So I feel like those are definitely the big things that I miss right now. Yeah, I am a big foodie as well. So I definitely have been taking advantage of like the socially distanced restaurants, the outside seating. Um, I probably eat a little bit too much, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, But I also think about like physical presence and commute. A lot of people are like, yay, no commute. I can just go from my bed to here and I I don't have a Zoom meeting. I can really wear whatever I want. Um, But I think that's interesting that you find solace in the commute to work. And I think that that's something that other people will cherish um, as we go back, as long as they can find a parking space, right? Um, So I kind of want to shift and talk about finals. Now, finals are coming up now. Typically we say like, oh, it looks a little bit different this year, but it actually looks the same as last year um, in terms of finals. But I just want you all to share what you think um, may be helpful for students that are preparing for finals, kind of like some tips and tricks that you've learned from uh, looking at the computer all day um, and how to kind of like debrief and take care of yourself um, as they prepare for finals. So we'll start with the Shumi and then we'll end with Dr. Goodman. Um, so I guess like the way that I'm really preparing for finals this year is obviously, like you said, same as last year, but kind of like all my professors have open note finals. So it's very nice to kind of just have like that sheet of all my stuff just ready to go and kind of like be able to reference that. And then I think as as I begin to actually like prepare for 
the final thing for my mental health, I'm starting to kind of at like 10 or 11 p.m. make sure my computer is turned off or at least if it's still on, I'm watching like I'm doing something fun, not productive anymore, just because to have that like balance between preparing for finals, but also not overdoing it, especially whenever I am just kind of staying in my apartment or maybe going for a walk as like my only time away from the computer. So I guess that's like the main thing I'm trying to do. Yeah, I would say when you're studying, if you can study outside, um, get outside, the weather's starting to warm up. I think that's really good to get a break from the screen as well. And also just practicing self-care. Like I know in finals, like that grind time, people, students just want to sit there and study and not take breaks. But the if you take a little break, the work you do after that, you're actually going to be more productive, right? And it can be anything. And I think a lot of times when we encourage students to engage in self-care or go to the gym or take walk things like that I think sometimes people expect it to be like an hour long or longer but like you can work out for 15 minutes you can go for a short walk and those little breaks actually are going to have a significant impact on the rest of your work and your productivity so like definitely schedule those self-care breaks and also like research shows that if you schedule time to like go to the gym or do something you're more likely to actually follow through on it so it's easy to say like I'm going to work out three times this week but if you actually schedule those three different times, like you're more likely to actually like do them. So like put them, if you have a planner, if you have a phone, however you keep your life organized, right? Like schedule those things, schedule your self-care, those breaks into your schedule. And I think that'll really help. And you'll notice a difference as you're going through this time. So. Yeah, I, that's very helpful. And I think that um, I'm definitely going to share that with my significant other. I often take breaks and they're like, oh, just finish it. I'm like, no, like I actually, after I take a break, I feel a little bit better mm -hmm. and I'm able to do that. So I'm definitely going to make sure that they watch this video so they understand <laughs> that I'm not just streaming uh, Netflix for uh, no purpose. <laughs> um, but as we wrap up here, I want you both to offer um, a piece of advice to for Shumi graduating seniors, but also for Dr. Guman, uh, for seniors and first year students and uh, second and third year students, a piece of advice when you were thinking about mental health and thinking about wrapping up for finals, but also thinking about how, you know, we've ha heard that we may be um, in person next year. So what that would look like and how to prepare. Um, so we'll start with Dr. Guman and then we'll end with Sh uh, Shumi. All right, so from me to you, I want to encourage you to take care of yourself, right? Like you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of the people in your life, right? And we want the best for everyone in our life, right? And we often do that at the expense of ourselves. The self-care is important and self-care is not selfish and keep that in mind, right? So you have to be your best self and the best version of yourself so you can truly help the people around you, right? And I know it's a it's a very noble and genuine cause and we want to be there for everyone and we want to be supportive and everything and oftentimes that comes at the expense of our own well-being so take care of yourself um, you owe it to yourself it's not selfish you deserve it you're worthy of it it matters it's important and it has a big impact on our well-being and happiness so take care of yourself and that's my advice from me to you um, and for me, my advice for me to you would be to one, live in the moment, especially like now my graduating seniors, I know that I'm like just looking at the next like few weeks and just like not intentionally counting down the days, but kind of realizing, oh my God, this is like, I have two weeks until I'm done and not just live in the moment and kind of give yourself that time to realize that, yeah, you are going to be done, but it's going to be okay. Um, and then also whatever you are feeling is completely valid, whether you're scared, you're excited, whether, you know, one day you're happy, the next day you're, you know, in the dumps, it doesn't matter what you're going, it matters what you're going through. And, you know, your feelings are completely valid, and it will all end up working out like very well. I'm sure I'll watch this back and be like, <laughs> shoot me on April 14th, knew what she was talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you both for sharing um, those pieces of advice. I, I want to thank you both for being here. I think that this is very valuable information um, for students to take in, to think about, you know, you're not alone in this journey. Um, there are resources. Um, there are people that are also experiencing those things and trying to figure out what self-care looks like for them, whether they're working at home or whether they're being um, at, on the front lines, whether they're food service workers or they're in healthcare and thinking about how to reinvent self-care for themselves. So um, as Dr. Gooman said, self-care is not selfish. So please, um, for everyone that's watching, take care of yourselves. And thank you for tuning in to the uh, fourth and final episode of For Me To You this semester. So yeah, so for our students, um, you know, it's right now, it's so easy to get support, to schedule an appointment with the counseling center. We're available 24 seven at any time you can call us and speak with a licensed clinician and to get started, just give us a call at 412-648-7930.
and you will be offered a same day appointment to be seen by one of our clinicians and to get started in services and to get therapy. And also we have a lot of other um, resources that aren't therapy. So if you're concerned about being a client and like going down that path and that journey, we get it. And we offer other services. We have virtual workshops that are available on our websites that you can tune into. We have a therapy assistance online platform that's available to all of our PIT students. You can access it with your PIT email. It's free and it's a self-help platform and you can work through some things as well. But we're here. You can just stop in just to talk to us. It can just be one time. It can be ongoing. Um, but just take that first step, um, you know, and we're here for you and we're here to support you however we can. So.